there is in most of us an underlying desire to buy stuff. <laughs> Caracas. This is where I grew up until I was 17. In this apartment in the seventh floor of an apartment building, I would take an elevator every morning, go down, find the car, go through hours of traffic in the midst of pollution and chaos to get to my school. Same thing on the way back. Caracas is the capital of Venezuela. In Venezuela, we have the biggest oil reserves in the world, one of the highest monetary inflations in history, the second biggest slums in the planet, and the most Miss Universe winners. <laughs> in countries like this with decaying economies, people tend to buy more than anywhere else in the world because things here appear more valuable or harder to get, so instinctively, we accumulate them. In fact, it seems the poorer you were, the more things you own. The same thing happened with fast food places. As food started to get cheaper and cheaper, eating too much became the problem rather than eating too little. After living here for 17 years in this country, in this city with 11,000 people per square mile, I decided it was time to make a change. So as soon as I graduated, I packed a small carry-on bag with only a few clothing articles. I left all my stuff behind, and I became a foreign exchange student in Mount Vernon, Washington, where I was received by this lovely couple. In this town, in the middle of nowhere, there were a couple stoplights. There were no buildings higher than two stories, no pollution. I met people there who have never even seen an elevator before. But I remember very clearly my first night there, I couldn't sleep at all because of how quiet it was. I've never been anywhere that you didn't at least have a highway nearby. And I came into this empty room, which is an empty closet, my bed, in this farm with just hectares of open space, a dog, chickens, turkeys, and a tree orchard. I've never been anywhere like this before. And I instantly fell in love with the lifestyle. With just me, the couple of things I brought with me, and all this open space to do whatever I wanted. I could look around and nothing was clouding my mind or taking over my thoughts, just me. And since then, I've been exploring this concept of minimalism. I'm sure you've all heard of the term, minim the term minimalism being applied to art or photography or graphic design. But minimalism is a lot more than this. Minimalism, it's a way of life of, uh, or a thought process. Coming where I'm from, I've never been a big fan of any word ending in ism. But I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like this is a practice most necessary in today's world where excess and greed are becoming the norm. And these are influencing the most basic aspects in our life today. Like in the UK, the Telegraph did a study where they found that the average kid today owns 238 toys, but only plays with about a of them. In the USA, the average home size, the average home size has nearly tripled in the last 50 years. And this scares me, and it should scare you, because what is it going to be in another 50 years? Where does this mentality stop? Right now, only a fifth of the world population accounts for 86% of total global consumer spending. Stuff keeps getting cheaper and cheaper, but our attitude towards it hasn't changed accordingly. When we buy something, we shouldn't only consider the environmental footprint or the cost in our wallet. We should consider the weight it will carry in our daily lives. We have to find a place for it, we have to clean it, organize it, look at it every day, take it with us wherever, wherever we go. Not only that, but we become so attached to these objects that when the time comes to let them go, we create this emotional battle. And every dollar you spend on some useless product that you might use once or twice and then keep it in your garage, it's not only this piece of paper that you're trading. It is the amount of lifetime and work that you had to spend to make this little piece of paper. And for me, there is nothing more pitiful than to waste lifetime. Because time is the only thing we cannot buy but only spend. My father once told me, from all the things you can do, do something that you can help others with and be great at it. So I decided I wanted to become an inventor. And following his steps, I came to Connecticut, to the same school he went to, he studied, and started my undergrad in mechanical engineering. But soon after that, I got quite disillusioned with the way the textbooks are teaching us how to design in the world today. These textbooks have problems like how to make a part for a machine so it would break in a couple of years, or how to make something so it would just withstand the minimum usage just to save a couple cents in the manufacturing process. I was so frustrated. I was about to go home, quit everything, try a new major. But I remember my friend was telling me, this is not really the way the world is working today. You look at every major successful company, and their success is not based on who's cheaper, but who has a better design. We invented ourselves this consumer society where the economy needs to keep constantly growing, and we need to keep consuming, buying more, creating a life around superfluous consumption, and a cycle of just buying and disposing. This is not the way it should be. 
But I'm very optimistic now. Because if you look at the world today, all these major discoveries and great changes are happening so quickly. And we need to, quick, we need, we need to be quick to change with them. Taking a deep look into our resources, designing smarter designs, making better products, and not only focusing on what we're making, but for whom and why. We can all live together in this world with the resources we have, if we live modestly. There is no lack of resources, just excess of greed and gluttony. I'm a senior mechanical engineer now, and I can tell you I love my major. A mechanical engineer, we create systems or products or machines, technologies, and I know these things drive consumerism, but they also allow minimalism. Just take a look at what your desk looked like 30 years ago. You know, you have to have a dictionary, yellow pages, agenda, calendar. Take a look at what it looks now. We have unlimited access to all the information in the world right in our pockets at all times. The point I'm trying to make is the amount of unnecessary things today is overwhelming. Minimalism is not about going through life with nothing. It is about taking anything, really, and stripping it to its most simple and honest self. I'm not asking you guys to live in a cardboard box. What I'm asking for you guys today is just to go home, take a look at your things, and uh, find something that is obstructing your life, something that is there but you don't really need it, and just get rid of it. And if this is a scary idea, just put it away in a box, check in a month or two. If you really didn't even think about it, then you really don't need it. It is time for us and for our things to stop defining who we are. Let's own less and do more. Thank you.